to start our service this morning by singing Sanctuary. And we have some new guidelines from our COVID task force, which says that it's all right to be singing quietly with masks. So feel free to do that in the pews. And uh, the reason for the quiet is, so people understand, is, is that the, the, the projectiles tend to happen with loud singing. So if we keep it nice and soft, it's basically like talking, and you can still enjoy singing along. So we're going to start with Sanctuary this morning. Thank you, Scott. Thanks for coming on this beautiful day. My name is Stephen Sherrick, and I want to welcome you to Westside Unitarian Universalist Congregation on this incredibly beautiful summer day. Helping me out this morning will be my amazing musical director, Scott Farrell, along with John and Larry, who will be providing music and song with a special appearance by our very own Neve Mazik Bianco. Kate Kirkwood is lighting our chalice, and Nicole Butler will be sharing our time for all ages. Henry and Nate, our tech experts bringing us together virtually, thank you. And for the gifts of all these folks, we are grateful. It is a blessing to be able to worship together and be here with all of you today. If you are with us for the first time or the first time in a while, welcome. We are glad that you are here to share in this time, to make space in your life, to attend to your heart and your spirit, and to come together in community. Please visit our website or scan the QR code in the pews to fill out a getting to know you welcome form so that we can send you our weekly electronic newsletter, The West Side Week, which is full of information about upcoming services and other virtual activities. We hope that you'll join us after the service for conversation and community, catching up with everyone and seeing warm faces on this amazingly beautiful day. We gather today from many locations. Oops, there went my rock. We gather today from many locations, and we take this moment to particularly acknowledge, acknowledge that our congregation resides on the territorial, on the traditional territory of the Duwamish people. In this acknowledgement, we recognize the Duwamish heritage imbued in the mountains, the valleys, the waterways, and shorelines that surround us all. May we nurture our relationship with our coastal Salish neighbors, especially the Duwamish people, and our shared responsibility to this place. Let us take a moment to offer humble respect for this place and its peoples and renew our commitment to the work of authentic reconciliation. Now let's take a moment to greet each other in whatever way feels right to you. Say hello to your neighbors.
So whoever you are, wherever you have come from, whatever the color of your skin, whoever and however you love, however your body moves and your brain works, however you identify, you're welcome in this faith community. Our Unitarian Universalist tradition has no test of faith, no creed, or oath to swear. We have instead the promises we make to one another, commitments we make to healing a hurting world within and beyond our walls. Our opening words this morning come from the late Ross Nichols, one of the founding fathers of modern nature-based spirituality and one of the founders of the order of bards, obates, and druids known as Obad. I feel it has relevance with all the horrible news that has fallen hard on us in the last couple days. He said, just as the winter solstice, we celebrate the shortest day and longest night, knowing that light will grow again. So at the summer solstice, we celebrate the longest day and the shortest night, knowing that daylight will now shorten. Here is a teaching paradox. Each peak, dark or light, contains the seeds of its own change. And as the Taoist tradition teaches, when yang peaks, it shifts to yin. When yin peaks, it shifts to yang. Now I'll read a message from the WSUU Board of Trustees. We are deeply saddened by the Supreme Court's decision to strike down the federal right to abortion on Friday. This is a blow to the civil rights and bodily autonomy of all people who can get pregnant. As Unitarian Universalists, we are called to witness and to act. We encourage you to take care of yourself at this emotional and frightening time, and then to learn how you can take action and so show solidarity with the people who are affected, who are disproportionately black, indigenous and people of color, and residents of states with restrictive abortion laws. And from our own Carrie Schur, who attended virtually the UUA General Assembly that, that happened in Portland, she shared from our UUA president, Reverend Susan Frederick Gay Gray, where she said she is very angry and her insides were roiling, especially at the injustice of this decision and its effects on BIPOC and rural folks. Others were angry, others were heartbroken, others were sick at heart. The UUA responded quickly to the emerging emotional needs and announced that attendees in Portland could make signs at the convention center and join local area protests last evening, including one where Reverend Frederick Gray was invited to speak. Attendees could also talk to the chaplains as needed or desired. You can go to the webpage for the UUA side with Love Action Center for an important letter with other actions that can be taken, including a three-part congressional organizing series starting on July 21st. In each week's service, we invite a member of our congregation to light the chalice of our shared Unitarian Universalist faith. Today, our chalice lighter is Kate Kirkwood. Kate retired in late 2017 for many years working in the grocery stores in the area, most recently at Met Market and Admiral, at Admiral where she was a long time wine seward. Um, she also graduated many years ago from Pitzer College with a degree in French. She, re she, re she recently came from a center for spiritual living church called Amazing Grace, where she volunteered in several capacities. Her favorite was in the choir. She has volunteered for many causes over the years. Before the pandemic, for example, she trained people to phone bank for Elizabeth Warren campaign. We could only dream. She looks forward to increasing her connections with the wonderful community of people at Westside. At this time, at this time, we are asking our chalice lighter to respond to the question what gives you hope?
Well, this feels very new because um, unfortunately for me, um, as a new person, I've met most of you online. Um, this is really only my second visit to the real church, and it's very exciting. Um, what gives me hope? I am so fond of walking. So when I feel most of the time the crisp wind, not this morning, against my cheeks, while listening to the birds sing melodically, observing the flowers in full bloom like the dogwood trees right now, that are surrounded by all shades of greenery, all of that gives me hope. I smile as I feel a small part of this natural scene doing my best not to take the scene for granted. When I'm passing or talking to someone in person and their face beams with a genuine smile, I do feel hopeful and more at peace with the world. When I walk past a playground, the sound of children playing gives me hope and really a bit of joy. The sound of laughter from people, especially children, I am gathering with gives me hope and also some joy. The sound, excuse me, when singing with others, like I was at the West Side Picnic in Lincoln Park, to the sing-alongs accompanied by the ukulele band, band, that gives me hope as well. When I feel people's generosity toward me, offering to help when I am not at my best, this gives me hope and makes me smile. Of course, when I remember to list all the things that I'm grateful for, this brings me hope and such a sense of peace as I am grateful to be here today with you. Thank you so much. As Kate lights our chalice, please join me in speaking the words of our, of our congregation's affirmation. Love is the doctrine of this congregation. The quest for truth is our sacrament, and service is our prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve humanity in fellowship. Thus, we covenant with one another. I was noticing how brightly that chalice uh, flamed up when it was lit this morning, and there's um, at this at this particular time, it's it's nice to know that there is this here, and there is this kind of a, a flaming light that's 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 still burning for all of us. Uh, Neve contacted me a couple of months ago, saying that they thought it would be fun for the two of us to sing this song we're going to sing next. It was originally performed by Rina Sawayama and Elton John. I listened to it and fell in love with it. As we are all facing these turbulent times and looking for ways to celebrate on this Pride Day here in Seattle, I truly believe it is time for all of us to find strength in the idea of chosen family, a very UU concept really. Time for us to join together in this chosen family and not let the actions of a few be the final determining factor of the right to make choices in our own lives. Choices about our own bodies, choices about the way we love and live in this world.
tell me your story and I'll tell you mine. I'm all ears. Take your time. We've got all night. Show me the rivers crossed, the mountains scaled. Show me who made you walk all the way here. Settle down, put your bags down. down the pain when you're ready we'll turn this page together open a bottle it's time we celebrate <laughs> who you were who you are we're one and the same yeah we, we don't, don't need, need to be related, related to relate we don't need to share genes or a surname, you are, you are my chosen, chosen family. Well, what if we don't look the same? We've been going through the same thing, yeah. You are, you are my chosen, chosen family. I chose you. Chosen family. I chose you. You, you chose, chose me. me. We're all right now. We don't need to be related to relate. We don't need to share genes or a surname. You are, you are my chosen, chosen family. So what if we don't look the same? We've been going through the same pain, yeah. You are, you are my chosen, chosen family. Share genes or a surname. You are, you are my chosen, chosen family. So what if we don't look the same? We've been going through the same pain. You are, you are my chosen, chosen family. We don't need to be related to relate. We don't need to share genes or a surname. Thank you, Scott and Neve. It feels like group hug time <laughs> to me right now. Can we pull, I don't think we can pull that off. Just like a, a virtual, uh, like not virtual, but let's group hug. So let's do it. Come on. 
Woo. Nebby, that was beautiful. Thank you. All right. It's time for our story of all ages. But before I tell you a little bit about that story, I would like to give you some background on my friends and fellow Druids who are sitting behind me who will be sharing some of the traditional rituals and blessings this morning, giving us a taste of the beautiful festivals and ceremonies that mark the rhythm of the circle, giving us something old and permanent that is still living and therefore also new. Nicole Butler has been a Druid in the Order of Bards, Ovates, and Druids, known as Obod, for almost two decades. During that time, she was the lead facilitator of the Grove of the Oaks and Eagle, co-founded the Obod Mid-Atlantic Gathering, and that list goes on and on. She has created and led practical skills workshops for pagan leaders on leadership, event management, active listening, inclusivity, and fundraising. On the spiritual side, she has written and led over 100 rituals and presented workshops on the Welsh, Welsh tradition of Mari Lud and peace practices as a neo-pagan and has emceed countless estifads, a bardic competition. Nicole is also a classically trained actor, singer, and dancer who later received her postgraduate degree in peace and conflict revolution at the Carter School, George Mason University. She lives with her husband, Dave, three cats in the Washington, D.C. area. She lived in the Washington, D.C. area for over 20 years before moving to the Pacific Northwest last year. Dave, you have to follow that. Dave Butler is a Druid grade member of the Order of Bards, Ovates, and Druids and has been identified as pagan since July 4th, 2007. Dave, who goes by David North, or simply North in esoteric circles, co-founded the Grove of Oak and Eagle in North Virginia in August of 2011, which rapidly became one of the largest Obod groves in the world. He also co-founded the Obod Mid-Atlantic Ga Gathering with his wife, Nicole. Dave is a former pilot in the U.S. Air Force and a combat veteran. While he was raised Southern Baptist, he quickly gravitated towards more liberal congregations as he grew older, ultimately settling on Unitarian Universalism for many years before becoming fully pagan. He fell in love with the Pacific Northwest. Well, he fell in love with the Pacific Northwest during a family vacation when he was five and finally realized his lifelong dream of living here in 2021. So now it's time for all it's our time for all ages where my friend and fellow druid, Nicole Butler, will tell us an ancient Irish myth, the story of 365 herbs about the healing power of plants. Oh, children of all ages, please come up to the front, if you wish. And Nicole's going to tell you a story. Thank you, Scott. So, I think it. Come on up. Hi. <laughs> Ooh, not used to a microphone. You'll have to forgive me here while I figure this out. How are you? Good. Uh, I'm Nicole, and I'm going to share with you the story of Edovath, and I will try to pronounce <laughs> the Gaelic to the best of my ability. Um, Edovath is the goddess of healing. And her tale comes from Irish mythology. And like all good oral traditions, it gets better and better the more it's told. 
and it's adapted to what's going on in the world. Hopefully, this, is, this telling is in that same vein. Unfortunately, Edeva's story is a tragic one. She is the daughter of Dian Kecht, one of the Irish mythological gods and the gods of healing. She is sister to Miach, the god of alchemy. Her father, Dian Kecht, was the greatest surgeon of all time. It was said he could heal body parts with replicas crafted of pure gold and silver. He knew the jealously guarded secrets of all the plants of the world, how they could harm, but also how they could heal. He was revered and respected and even sometimes feared because of his vast knowledge and talents. As his fame grew and grew, he became arrogant and prideful. One day he heard a rumor that his son, Miach, was a better healer than he. Well, Miach was his apprentice. How could an apprentice possibly know more than the teacher? Mm -hmm. But the rumor persisted, and Dian Tach became so jealous that in a fit of rage, he took up his sword and killed his son. Dian Tach was immediately overcome with grief and wept bitter tears of sorrow as he solemnly buried Miach. Now I told you that story to tell you this one. Here is the story of how Edeva became the goddess of healing. The following spring, an herb garden grew on Miach's grave in the shape of his body. Edeva discovered this miracle and resolved to record the knowledge contained in these plants so that she could finally share that knowledge with the world. This secret would be resolved and everyone would have access to the healing power of herbs. She carefully picked some of each plant and laid them out on her cloak until at last she had the form of her brother in flowers. 365 different herbs, which roughly correspond with the tendons, 365-ish tendons in the human body. Each plant was placed on the body part. It could heal. I'm sure you know what's coming next. Good old Dion Tech <laughs> comes in, discovers what his daughter is doing. And again, in a fit of rage and jealousy, seizes the end of the cloak and shakes all of the herbs that are scattered to the four winds of the world. Now, this is where I really like Edeva. She could have given up. She could have flown into a rage. She could have become like her parent in many different ways. But instead of doing that, instead of embracing jealousy, she resolved to regather all 365 herbs from the world. And as a druid, this is an inspiration for me to go out and discover what herbs, what plants heal the body. So to that end, uh, this morning I was out in my garden uh, enjoying the sunlight and I picked a little bit of lavender um, and I've been smelling it all morning, so it's great. Um, so, uh, if you could tell me, uh, lavender is a pretty well-known herb, and it grows so beautifully out here in the Pacific Northwest. It becomes like hedges. It's wonderful. Um, what is lavender good for? Antimicrobial. Ooh, yes. Antimicrobial, microbial, um, for those of you in the back. And on line, hi, by the way. Um, it's, cal mm -hmm. it's calming. Yeah, it's got a great smell. Anyone else? It's a sleep aid. Yeah. Do we have any herbalists here? Those who study study herbs. Great. A little bit. Yeah, we all do. That's wonderful. Um,
can be eaten as a, yeah. Hmm, that sounds really good, lavender shortbread cookies. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing um, your knowledge with me. And um, if it's appropriate, I'm, I'm not 100% up on uh, the COVID um, uh, you know, protocols here. This one I figured out pretty quickly. Um, <laughs> I do have a basket um, with some of the lavender from my garden. Um, I guess I'll just place it here. And if you are willing and able, you might want to come and grab some um, throughout the, the morning. Don't worry, there's more Druid stuff coming, but thank you so much for spending this time with me. So today our children, age five and older, accompanied by an adult, are going to join a Marantha, a Bera, Sandy is for some creative art activities. So let us sing our children out with As You Go. In a moment, we will engage in a collective act of generosity known as our offering. When we take the time to actively support Westside UU and its many ministries with our gifts by text or by check, each month we choose a community organization to share one-third of our undesignated offering gifts, that is, those donations not designated as your pledge contributions. For the month of June, our community giving recipient is the Duwamish Tribal Service, Real, Real Rent Duwamish. The mission of the Duwamish Tribal Services is to promote the social, cultural, political, and economic survival of the Duwamish tribe, to, to revitalize Duwamish culture and to share our history and culture with all peoples. Real Rent calls on people who live and work in Seattle to make rent payments to the Duwamish tribe. Through the city, named for the Duwamish leader, Chief Seattle thrives. The tribe has yet to be justly compensated for their land, resources, and livelihood. You can give by text, by sending a message with the dollar sign in the amount you want to give to 616-404-4171. That's 616-404-4171. If you need to update your payment information, text UPDATE to that same number. For folks who are here in the sanctuary and prefer to share your gifts by cash or check, you'll note that there's a box at the back of the sanctuary to collect your giving. If you'd like your gift to be recorded as coming from you, please use one of the envelopes in the pews. Thank you to everyone for giving as you are able to support Westside in the Duwamish Tribal Service, Real Rent Duwamish. Your generosity of time, treasure, and presence are gifts that sustain our community. Please enjoy this centering music played by John and Larry.
Thank you everyone for giving as you're able to support Westside and the Duwamish Tribal Service, Real Rent Duwamish. Your generosity of time, treasure, and presence are gifts that sustain our community. Hello again. I've been asked to speak up. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, now here comes, as promised, a little more Druid stuff. Um, so uh, first of all, on behalf of Dave and myself, thank you for inviting us to be part of your Sunday morning. We are honored to be here and share a little bit of our path through the order of bards, ovates, and druids as modern practici practitioners. It's also an honor to be in a place of love, healing, light, and warmth. I'd like to wish you all a glorious Pride Month, a belated Juneteenth, and a belated summer solstice, or Alban Hefen, as we say in the Druid tradition, which loosely translates from the Gaelic as uh, light of summer. But more on the light of summer in a minute. First, a talky bit. A brief overview of the Order of Bards, Ovates, and Druids. Now first, um, one might, when you hear the word druid, one might like to wax poetic into uh, stories of Merlin and, and wizards with tall hats and Arturian legends. I, or and my favorite one, is the druids that move boulders with their mind. I was watching a movie with my husband the other, the other night, and I looked at him and I said, can you do that? <laughs> I can't do that. Are we supposed to be doing that? I don't know if I can do that, so I'm going to leave the boulder moving with my mind uh, for another uh, lifetime. Um, <laughs> so the Order of Bards, Ovates, and Druids, or Obad for short, is a modern magical tradition with roots and influences uh, from the rich and somewhat controversial legacy of Celtic mythology, lodge traditions, early Christianity, and even the civil rights movements throughout history. There is no one single point in history where we say, this is when Druidry began, and this is the most original thing about Druidry that we know, so we're going to do it that way. It is truly building a mystery. As such, Obad does not uh, have any religious requirements. Uh, members can practice any religion or path. Uh, they may believe in one or several or all or no deities. It is dogma-free, meaning that there is no one right way to practice. This is the point where talking about Druidry becomes enigmatic, but I'll try to do my best. The emphasis is on self-discovery through our relationship with nature, then doing something about it. As a former chosen chief of the order said once, and I was actually in the room when he said this, uh, his name is Philip Cargom. He said, sort yourself out and be of some use. Now, as members and friends of Universalist Unitarian Congregation, that might sound familiar. Uh, for more on uh, Obad Druidry, I encourage you to visit Druidry dot org 
um, or see my, Dave or myself afterwards, we can try to point you to some, some other resources. Now, here we go. As many Earth-based practices, Druids tend to celebrate the eightfold wheel of the year, marking celestial events and the progression through the seasons. Normally, we would form a circle in nature, a garden, a park, deep in the woods, or even someone's backyard. Thank you, Julie and Stephen, for letting us make a mess. So it's a bit odd uh, to be here on a stage uh, with four walls, a roof, and doors. <laughs> Excuse me, but... Um, uh, but it is, again, an honor to be here. Earlier, I had wished you a belated happy solstice, which is the 20th uh, through the 21st of June-ish. Um, in light of that, and pardon the pun, um, and of our proximity to the sol solstice, Stephen, Dave, and I would like to share uh, with you a few bits from an Alban Heffen ceremony Dave wrote specifically for this occasion. We invite you, as you are willing and able to participate, but don't worry, if you are simply druid curious, we will have tutorials along the way. Now, as you know, most, uh, you might know, most pagan traditions uh, acknowledge four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. Today, and because there are three of us, and because it just seemed to feel right, we'll be drawing on an older Celtic tradition that works with the blessings of earth, sea, and sky. Please feel free to participate, and please stand as you are willing and able. In the name of the hawk of dawn, soaring in the clear, pure air, we call upon the powers of the sky. In the name of the salmon of wisdom, who dwells within the sacred pool, we call upon the powers of the sea. May all disturbing thoughts be laid aside. I will now offer a brief grounding meditation, which is a means to calm the mind and body, as well as center oneself in this moment of time. I invite you to join with us as you are willing and able. So here we go. Let us take a deep breath together and then exhale slowly. Close your eyes, if you will, and while continuing to breathe slowly but steadily, feel the floor firmly beneath your feet. After connecting with the floor, move your focus deeper to the foundation of the sanctuary. Then beneath that, to the rich soil upon which it was built. Like the roots of a tree, let your consciousness extend even further past the bedrock and continuing onwards until the earth reaches back and says, hello. May the earth ground all negativity and give us strength. While continuing to breathe slowly, now turn your thoughts to the air around you. Connect with the air and let your awareness of it flow through it. Then begin to reach upwards. Extend your consciousness towards the ceiling of the sanctuary, then beyond. 
continue climbing higher and higher, beyond the tallest trees, soaring past the birds, and moving further into the vast sky above, reaching for the stars. May the air charge our intellects and the stars sign peace and light upon us. With our minds, let us now reach out to the waters around us. Start with the groundwater that surrounds us, then flow with the runoff from the rains towards the streams into the bay. Let your spirit flow through them. And from the bay, journey onwards to the Pacific Ocean, then beyond to the waters that encircle the globe. May the water purify us and grant us wisdom on our inner journey. With the blessings of earth, sea, and sky, let us slowly open our eyes and begin our ceremony. Thank you, Dave. So each week, we come together as a congregation to connect and share that which matters to us most. At this time, we make collective space for, hope, for holding our joys and our sorrows. Um, the next space on my um, service was, Steve, add your thoughts, which can, as ones that know me, can be dangerous. <laughs> um, so today, I want to combine our joys and sorrows and turn it into action. So the news on Friday was devastating, and sadly, we're all aware that this is only the beginning the tip of the iceberg. There's blood in the water and the sharks are circling. The foe is organized and strong and they see us as weak and vulnerable with no clear objectives. But we don't have an option to give up. Not if we want to leave the world, leave a world with which our children can cope. We will be in a struggle in coming years with the many dark forces coming upon our world, with institutions sunk in corruption, with ideologies that twist people's minds. We need to find a common ground on which to struggle and rebuild from the breakdowns which are now inevitable. We need a place to make a stand, a home ground. To me, the last several years here at Westside fits a bit of that narrative that our foe sees as vulnerable. Objectives maybe not being clear, splits down the middle of our congregation with infighting, drama, and words and actions that have caused so much grief and sadness. We watched our people walk away from this congregation, confused and angry. Folks that we have shed tears of sadness and joy with, friends that we celebrated proudly together watching our children pass through these sacred doors 
with all our love and support. I am not proud to say that I am one of those that walked away. But let me tell you, and let my children and grandchildren tell you, we don't have an option to give up. And we do have a place to make a stand, right here, together, as one. That's how we win. So, I invite you right now to grab your stone, if you grabbed one, and that you have marked. And I want, I want you to bring it up onto this grassy hill. <laughs> and you can do it one at a time if you're so able. Bring it up to this grassy hill and place it right here and let's create a cairn of solidarity. If you all don't know what a cairn is and the story of cairns, and you can, y'all can walk up as I speak. So back in the ancient days in Ireland, Scotland, when there was a battle to be fought, everyone would be told to come together on a grassy hill and everyone would grab a stone along the way. And as people showed up, that pile would get higher, and a cairn was built in solidarity for all those who were getting ready to go to the battle. The combined energy of those stones gave them hope, gave them the will to fight. By placing these stones on our grassy hill, we're committing to fight for truth and justice and to do it together. When you leave today, after the service, gather back your stone. Take it with you as you fight the daily battles that will try to wear you down. But it's our secret weapon because it holds the energy of this community, of this sacred place. And when you return in two weeks or four weeks or whenever, bring it back and place it back on the beautiful green hill. Let us now, in a moment of silence, followed by music, hold in the tender vessel of our loving care all the joys and sorrows, both known and unknown, of our beloved community.
I want to take a moment to define three interrelated aspects of modern Druidry, the knowledge of which will hopefully enhance your understanding of the context and meaning of some of the things we are doing and saying in today's service. These three things are all Welsh words. These, sorry, these three things uh, that I'm about to talk about are all Welsh words. Uh, and we begin with the word awen. It's spelled A-W-E-N. The next word that we're going to talk about is gorsed, spelled G-O-R-S-E-D-D. -D. And the last, eisteddfod, spelled E-I-S-T-E-D-D-F-O-D. Awen translates as inspiration, whether that inspiration be poetic, artistic, experiential, or spiritual. Gorsed means thrown, and eisteddfod literally means a sit thing or a collective sitting. In modern practice, it is a session that celebrates the bardic arts, namely poetry and song. On the summer solstice of 1792, and this year's solstice occurred just this past Tuesday, a Welsh bard named Yolo Marganig convened the first meeting of the Gorsed, the throne of the bards. Um, and this was on Primrose Hill in London. Primrose Hill has a long association with the folklore and prophecy uh, of that area. And Yolo's goal was not only to poke his finger in the eye of the English, but also to romanticize the lineage between the culture of the ancient Celts and that of 18th century Wales. For this event, Yolo wrote what he called the Gorsed Prayer, literally the throne prayer, modern versions of which are used by Druids around the world today, uh, including in today's service. Yolo intended it as his gift to the world, and his rituals and Gorsed traditions are still in use today by the Welsh National Eisteddfod. During today's service, when we finish the Gorsed prayer that we are about to speak, we will chant the word Awan three times. And I encourage you to join in if you are so moved. The chanted Awan will be drawn out to three syllables and it will sound like this. Does everyone got that? Are you ready? Okay. Here we go with the Gorsed prayer. Grant, feel free to, to follow along and, or read along as you wish. Grant, O Spirit, thy protection, protection. And, and, and protection, protection strength, strength, and, and in strength, strength understanding, understanding, and in an understanding, understanding knowledge, knowledge, and, and in knowledge, knowledge, the knowledge, knowledge of, of justice, justice and in the knowledge of justice, the love of it, and in the love of it, the love of all existences, and in the love of all existences, the love of spirit and all goodness. Now is the noontime of the year, when flora bloom and fauna thrive under a bright sun. We gather in this place of light to celebrate the fires of the sun. I proclaim the time of the summer solstice. The greatest of all feasts of fire, beloved by the fairy folk. I call upon the fires of the sky. I call upon the power of lightning lancing towards the heart of the oak. 
May this circle be inspired with the element of air. I call upon the fires of water. I call upon the goddess of the boiling spring, the waters that scald and the waters that heal. May this circle be instilled with the elements of water. I call upon the fires of the earth. I call upon the earth's own glowing heart, on peaks that burn and stones that flow. May this circle be imbued with the element of earth. We are met here at this time of the longest day of the year to celebrate the zenith of the sun. We come together to honor a great mystery that every zenith has its nadir. Every nadir, its zenith. We come together to celebrate the power of light and the warmth and of summer. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> Just in just in case you were wondering, the stones are okay. <laughs> are you okay? I'm okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> so thank you uh, so much for uh, chanting the Awan and reciting the Gorsed prayer, which I found new meaning in this morning in light of uh, what's going on. So uh, what I'd like to do is um, offer also a poem that one of our members back in the old C group uh, of the Oak and Eagle way back on the, way back on uh, in DC uh, wrote oh wrote as a response <laughs> I'm really working with these mics today um, <laughs> wrote in response to the Gorsed prayer um, so this will be a call and response we're probably pretty familiar with the way that works and uh, it'll be up there on the screen. So the way this works is I will call out the line from the Gorsed prayer, and then we can read together um, the four or five lines that come afterwards um, as part of the poem. Moving on. <laughs> uh, okay, um, then if you'll permit me. All right, so are you all ready? Great, thanks. Grant, O Spirit, thy protection. We raise our voices in spite of time, death, and the spaces between the stars. We dance, we breathe, we gather. There is a spirit that makes us one. Grove, moon, east, west, south, North, and in protection, strength. Spirit as our strength, and this, the sacred place of sunrise. Joined hands, and our roots return, winding and unwinding a circle. Body, honor, peace, altar, earth. Lay all disturbing thoughts aside. Ah, oh, when? and in strength understanding. A threat breaks with the slightest tug, yet many can move my faith, my triad. The spirit takes many forms, friends, family, and mountains. I am what I am, a knotting cycle of life, and in understanding knowledge, love. Ancestors, you and mistletoe crown, are you with us this night? And in knowledge, the knowledge of justice, peace of the fire, walk in justice and mind. Winter is the seed of fire. As the fire dies down, this poem rises. And in the knowledge of justice, the love of it. Thus is the power of the earth fire and threshold, message of grove and altar. And in the love of it, the love of all existences. Understanding and in the love of 
of the ages, strength. And this, the sacred place of root and stone, moon and water, in the light of the knowledge of spirit, and in the knowledge of it, goodness, and in the love of all existences, and the love of it, and the love of it, and the love of it, the love of spirit and all goodness. We raise our many voices. Amen. Of recall, let us thank the elements for their gifts. In the name of the salmon of wisdom, we thank the element of the sea. In the name of the great bear of the starry heavens, we thank the element of earth. Deep within the still center of our beings, may we find peace. Silently, within the quiet of the grove, may we share peace. Gently, within the greater circle of humankind, may we radiate peace. Please join me in three Amens. Well, my deepest thanks to everyone who participated in this service, my friends and my mentors, David and Nicole. Thank you so much. Scott, thank you for all your beautiful song and support. It's always appreciated. Neve. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. John and Larry, as always, thank you. Your presence always enriches us. And as always, it's a pleasure and blessing to do this sacred work together. Members, do make sure you look at the West Side Week, which you will have received on Friday, for details about all kinds of important stuff and remember, our website is full of great information about our ongoing groups. See the connection area on the website. A reminder, we are needing more volunteers at the White Sitter Food Bank, and as of June, Liz Bucklew is taking over volunteer coordination. If you have any questions or want to volunteer, please contact Liz. Next Sunday, there's no worship, and we will meet again on July 10th with Reverend Kerry Kopnick, who will be at our, pu at our pulpit. And please join us either virtually or in person. If you are here and would you like to go downstairs immediately after service, we're going to set up some chairs in circles. Finally, Nicole, you get a circle. To have conversations, to share stories, Proclaim your fears and shout your joys. Dave and Nicole will also be there if you have any questions about Druidry or about the service itself. As Kate releases our flame, I'll leave you with words from Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. He says, without respect for the freedom of choice, peace is not possible. May you go into this week blessed and blessing the world. We hold you 
in our love as you go. We're just going to have, we're going to have some music and all, but we could do the amen. We could do that. We can do it, but whatever you want to do. And, and one reminder, please, don't forget your stones. Don't forget your stones. No. Thank you, everybody.